Sylvester Stallone i bjergbestigerfilmen Cliffhanger svang sig i t-shirt fra tinde til tinde og tabte en kvinde i dybet under en redningsaktion. Nu skal de se Amerikas mest populære og mest fjollede komiker Jim Carrey i samme situation. Offeret er ikke en kvinde, men en vaskebjørn, og det er lige så alvorligt, når man er kæledyrsdetektiv Ace Ventura i lederhosen, mit fuspedal und slagsarme. Hungry fella? Nothing more we can do. Looks like. Der gik den i vasken, den søde bjørn, og Ace Ventura bliver så deprimeret, at han går i kloster i Tibet. Men der er bud efter ham, og han bliver rodet ind i en række vildt skøre detektivopgaver i Afrika. Det skal vi ikke beskrive her, det, det skal ses. Jim Carrey kender vi fra den første Ace Ventura, Masken, Dum Dummer og Batman Forever. Og den nye film hedder Ace Ventura, Når naturen kalder. Den er gennemført fjollet, vulgær ud over alle grænser og ret sjov. For mig er der ingen tvivl om, at Carrie er en god filmkomiker med sans for visuelle gags, som strækker sig fra at gylpe ned i halsen på en ørneunge, som lige har set det, til at lade sig føde langsomt af en, et plastik næsehorn. Man bliver ventileret og vågen af hans vanvid. Det er som lavkomik, og det kan vi godt lide. Instruktøren hedder Steve Oderick, og premieren finder sted 1. juledag. Broen til den næste film er Good Old Sly, Sylvester Stallone. Denne gang over for damernes ven Antonia Banderas, Assassins legemordere. Julian Moore spiller en super hacker, som falder for Sleje. Sleje spiller en gammeldags legemorder, som er ved at være træt af sit fag. Da fanden blev gammel, gik han jo i kloster, som man siger, men det lever ham op, at han får en konkurrent. Og det er den uregerlige, ambitiøse Antonio Banderas, som kun har én tanke i hovedet, at blive number one. Filmen er i al sin primitivitet de to mænds opgør. Primitiv, men kontant underholdende, og de to var ryler og klæder hinanden. Sleje, livstræt og neddæmpet, hvilket klæder hans spinkle skuespillertalent. Banderas frembrusende og storskrydende, 
og med den moderne pistolføring fra Desperado, skyderen holdes ikke lodret, men vandret. Det er jo ret at vide, hvis man vil skyde nogen på en moderne måde her i julen. Men altså kort sagt, Assassins er, som det hedder i annoncerne, god til prisen og kan ses i en nærliggende biograf fra i morgen. Turn off to the airport. All right, I'm sorry, okay? What did you just blew your teeth, my friend? What do you think I'm trying to run you up, pal? Just huh? do your job. Don't tell me my job. I don't beat it with a fucking fair in my life. Do your job. Get out. What? You think I'm running you up, pal? Just get out. You, you, you can't just. Uh... The hell I can't. Just get out. Go on, find another cab. <laughs> I don't believe this. Robert Graff. You can't shoot me through the glass. Bulletproof. Huh? Took it out. Pow! You got me. No. So, now what? Who are you kidding? Konya. Robert Graff wants to know me. Mm. I don't believe this. What? Uh, Bain? Miguel Bain? Let me see. You roll some cabbie. Then, wait for the right call. That's genius, man. Then you got the balls to sit there and bullshit with me. No way I could have done that. No way. You stole my contract. How'd you know about it? I silenced through the 22s. Classic. You know, I switched. When I heard that's what you used. Oh, uh, excuse this. It was a long shot. But a good one, wasn't it? Who's your contractor, Miguelito? <laughs> Why don't you drive? We can get acquainted. I de næste tre film bliver de sparet for mor og vold, men det kommer igen senere. Den første er australsk, og den er et lille vidunder. En dårende dejlig dyrefilm, som på H.C. Andersens maner handler om mennesker. Den er produceret af George Miller, som blev verdensberømt på de tre Mad Max-film, og instruktøren hedder Chris Noonan. Babe, den kække gris, hedder den. Og den handler om en lille gris, som vindes af en foravler og kommer til at vokse op som eneste gris blandt andre dyr. 
de rigtige levende dyr i filmen spiller aldeles vidunderligt, og de taler menneskesprog, så der er ingen undskyldning for ikke at invitere alle børnene ind og se den. Menneskesproget er dansk, som de kan høre det her. Babe, den kække gris. Det er en gris. Den bliver spist, når den er stor. Bliver vi spist, når vi er store? Du godste nej. Mennesker spiser kun dumme dyr, som får ænder og høns. <laughs> den ser også dum ud, mor. Det er ikke så dum som får. En gris er bestemt dumme. <coughs> Undskyld lige. Det er vi ikke. Du Mille, hvem er du? Jeg har en stor hvid. Ja, det er din race, skat. Hvad er dit navn? Det ved jeg ikke. Øhm, kaldte din mor ikke dig og dine søskende for et eller andet navn? Hun kaldte os alle sammen det samme. Og hvad var det, skat? Hun øh, kaldte os babe. M måske skulle vi ikke snakke for meget om øh, familie. Hvor er min mor? Så, så. Du skal være en stor dreng nu. Jeg blev taget fra min mor, da jeg var lille, og mine valpe bliver snart taget fra mig. Men jeg kan passe på dig, hvis du vil. Bare til du finder dig selv. Det lille gris er ked af det. Han skal sove hos os. Bare til han finder sig selv. Bare til han har fundet sig selv. Thank you for coming all the way from Australia to visit us. <laughs> thank you for a marvelous and funny film. A pleasure, thank you. Uh, you you're playing the farmer's wife. Yes, Mrs. Yeah. Hoggett. Mrs. Mm -hmm. Hoggett. And uh, what kind of a person is she? Uh, well, firstly, she's a lot older than I am, which I'm sort of hoping you've noticed. <laughs> yes, I was astonished. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, that's so kind. Um, she's a very bossy woman and she talks a great deal. And she's basically just a farmer's wife and she, you know, cooks her preserves and her baking and cakes and all that sort of thing. And she's you know, very successful in that way. And she never shuts up, uh, in contrast to her husband, who very rarely speaks. But she's, I think, a good-hearted woman, but she is also the, the bad guy of the film because she's the one who wants to eat the pig for Christmas. And that's the drama in the film. It is, very much One so. of them. Yeah, one among many, yeah. Yes. Wasn't it scary to play with so many animals? I mean, they're so beautiful and they're so kind, and you're the bad guy, as you say. Wasn't it scary? <laughs> that they might wreak their revenge on me yeah, somehow. Eat you. <laughs> oh, I never thought of that. Um, it would have added, added a bit of extra tension to my performance, I think. Uh, no, the animals were really well behaved, actually, because they were very well trained and they'd They'd all been specially bred for the film. There was a huge livestock barn with hundreds and hundreds of animals. And Carl Lewis Miller, who's worked on a lot of films before, Beethoven, and he's a very experienced animal trainer. So the animals were very well behaved, although I have to say when a pig doesn't want to do what it's told, it makes a terrible noise. It's, it's like something from hell. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to sound too awful about this experience, but uh, no, they were very well behaved, actually, the animals. How many pigs were actually used for, for the role of Babe? There were 48 pigs all up, and they all had quite different personalities. And in fact, there was one pig that was a real character. And every time it hit its mark, it would just throw its head up and go like that. And they incorporated that into the film because they loved it so much. And that became the singing pig with the la, la, la. So that was how that happened. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Did you know the story before before you made the, um, the film? Uh, have you read the book? No, I didn't read the book. Mm -hmm. No, I haven't read the book. I'm in certainly intending to, though, because uh, I love the film so much. I love the script. As soon as I read it, I thought, what a fabulous script. Yes, because we, what we, we love uh, like that when we see the film for the first time is that it, it's so close to the spirit of Hans Christian Andersen. It's an adventure film. It, it talks about animals, but of course, indirectly, it talks about people. 
Oh, it's very much a reflection of human society, and it's sort of, it, it's similar in some ways to the Animal Farm, except this time the pigs get a, <laughs> a much better deal than they did in that film. And it's an allegory of, of human society and the way that we conduct ourselves, which I think is why people respond so strongly to the film. And there's a sort of innocence that animals have too that I think human beings have lost. And so you can vicariously experience it via the animals, a sort of a, a directness and an and immediacy um, and a spontaneity that we don't have uh, in their appreciation of the way that the world works. So I think, I think that's a lot of the reason why people respond. It's very rich in symbols, the film, and um, it's a fable, I think. It's a, it's a fable, and it's, it, it is also about how, um, how easy it is for us to change the, the cliché way of looking upon each other if we want to. Yeah, well, it's, about, it's also about prejudice. It's about not accepting that you have to stay in the confines of the role that you have. Give us, give us some examples from the film. Well, the main thing, I think, is about the pig itself, which wants to be a, a sheep pig rather than um, ending up, uh, I suppose, as bacon, really. And um, so it's, it's about the, the pig breaking out of those boundaries. It's also about respect for other species and other forms of life. And the pig... The, the way that the pig actually ends up being a sheep pig is, is through um, niceness. <laughs> it's quite a moral tale, I think, but it's, it's really very much about respect, which I think is something that human beings draw from the film too, because it makes you aware that we're not the only species on the planet, that there are a number of other species that, that we have to be respectful and aware of, I think. Now I know that you're a great comedian in Australia and, and very, very well known. Weren't you afraid that the, the, the animal should take the picture away from you? Oh, I didn't. I don't mind that they have. I, I know if the, if the pig could talk, it would be we sitting would here, here now yeah. instead of me, yeah. <laughs> travelling first class around the world. <laughs> um, no, it's fine. It's a, it was such a a lovely film. I actually felt very lucky and privileged to be in it in any way and to contribute in any way that I could. So no, I don't mind at all. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you. Og så var det dagen før jul, og tiden var inde for grisen. Ordner du ham så i aften? Hmm. Godt, så kan jeg blodet løbe fra. Det er sødt. Hvad er? Ikke noget. Hvad i alverden fabler du nu om? Søn at gå glip af prisen for bedste skænke til skuet næste år. Han er ved at være godt trin. Pragtfuld. Men... Det er nok fjollet at vente. En dejlig skarp kniv. Så skal vi til en lille dansk familiefilm, som hedder Circus Illebrand. Den er instrueret af Claus Bjerre, og det er hans spillefilmsdebut. Hans Henrik Kolse har skrevet manus, og skuespilleren er Anne-Marie Helker, Tim og Gordon, og børnene spilles af Sara Christine Mosegaard, Marie Lundberg Barré og Morten Gundel. Så er der nogle søde dyr, et stille æsel og en fløjtende og talende papegøje. Den handler blandt andet om, at voksne altid er i vejen for børns gode lege. Skal man bruge et godt sted til at udfolde sin fantasi, står der altid en eller anden idiot af en voksen og siger, her må du ikke være. Børnene vil lave cirkus, men det må de ikke, fordi et par fæle boligspekulanter, Tim og Gordon, skal bruge stedet. Børnene søger tilflugt hos Mirabella, det er Helker. Hun er selv som et fortryllet barn, og så bor hun på en gammel brandstation og har en rigtig gammel rød brandbil. Men de onde spekulanter vil også have hende af vejen, og så stjæler de skøde til hendes hus, og det skal børnene så have tilbage i robrød, så de kan få lov til at lege i fred. Der kommer vi aldrig op. Det klarer vi. Så vi er den der, og holder sammen på en bil, okay? Okay. Det er meget dyr. Nej, 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 Du skal tale sødt til dem. Ah, lille papegøje, kom. Det var så sikkert, det virker. Det er da krav for en dem, mand. Det 
Vi det i havnen. Slut med det pengeskab. Pengeskab! Det var lige godt. Hey, tag sådan set her, Stoffer. Cirkus Lillebrand er en af den slags film, som fungerer inden for et meget snævert område. Det er sød og barnlig spænding, og den renste uskyld, men resultatet er beskedent. Og så vil jeg nøjes med at sige, at den er premiere første juledag. I morgen er der derimod premiere på en dansk storfilm, kun en pige, baseret på Lise Nørgaards erindringer. Danske film bliver altid så sent færdige, at vi har svært ved at nå at få dem overspillet til tv-format. Derfor er det her ingen anmeldelse, men blot et lille forskræb. Næste gang gør vi mere ud af den, og så er den også ude i hele landet. Jeg vil nøjes med at sige, glæd dem. Det er for en tid at på. Den er ikke engang 11. Og det mener du ikke er sent? Det er slut med at køre rundt i det rullende værtshus, hvis vi sidder her og venter. Forstår du? Hvis I synes, det er så sent, hvorfor er I så ikke bare gået i sæk? Lad os høre noget musik. Gå i sæk. Vi vil gerne tale med dig om din fremtid. Min fremtid? Jeg skal til Amerika. Nu skal du ikke være frem. Når jeg kommer hjem, skal jeg være journalist i København. Kom ikke her, når man hører den lotte kø. Du skal hverken til København eller Amerika. Du skal til Sorø. Far! På Frygten Vestergaards husholdningsskole. Ja, det er et udmærket sted. Det bliver over mit liv! Jeg har fandme aldrig hørt noget lignende. Som sagt får Lise Nørgaard og Peter Skrøder først Bogart have det på næste gang. Så vender vi tilbage til vold og spænding. So fucking what har haft premiere. Den poetiske titel kan oversættes med op i røven, pardon my French. Den minder lidt om Oliver Stones Natural Born Killers, men den er ikke så god. Den handler om et gisseldrama, som hele Amerika følger med i. Hovedpersonen Spab spilles af Steven Dorff, og han bliver helt, fordi han skyder gisseltagerne, og på grund af den dybe livsfilosofi, han fører sig frem med, nemlig so fucking what. Ladies and gentlemen, the curiosity about Cliff Spab throughout the country has been overwhelming. Uh, he's now bordering on cult status. Uh, hang on, yes ma'am, right here. What's Cliff Spab really like? Exactly like he was on those tapes. God, reality programming gives reality a bad fucking name. What do you think? He's a lazy, foul-mouthed, uneducated drug addict. That's <laughs> kind funny. Wendy, uh, you met Cliff Spab at the fun stop. Uh, he's from working-class Madison Heights. You're from the wealthy suburb of Ozell Park. Uh, bottom line, you and Cliff are very different people, aren't you? In what ways? I really don't think we're all that different. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo! <laughs> Wendy looks good! Mm-hmm. I'd do it. But uh, you're perceived differently. 
Well, that's what this is all about anyway, isn't it? Perceptions? I mean, I don't think people know Stab any more than they know me. Fucker. I mean, you know, with the handcuffs and everything. Right, shut the fuck up, moron. They may think they know the two of us, but they don't know us at all. Okay, Wendy. I gotta ask you this. Where is Cliff Spat? Oh, I know! I know! I know here! Uh, indeed, all of America is wondering, where is Cliff Spat? Where can he be? Is he on the road, or has foul play befallen him? So fucking what er instrueret af Jeffrey Levy, som også har skrevet manuskriptet. Nu skal vi til en brandgod kriminalfilm instrueret af den unge amerikaner Brian Singer. The Usual Suspects gamle kending hedder den. Og det refererer til den klassiske replik fra Casablanca, Round Up The Usual Suspects. Lad os få de gamle vaneforbrydere ind på banen. Der er ingen superstjerner i filmen, men et ensemblespil, hvor alle er lige fremragende, veloplagte og uhyggelige i rollerne. Vi mødte den unge instruktør Brian Singer og nogle af hans skuespillere på en badebro i Cannes. På det tidspunkt var The Usual Suspects allerede blevet filmbyens kultfilm. Alle elskede den. They're coming up. Did you hear me? He's coming up. As soon as we're done. talking about here is also a very a film filled with uh, energy mm. but quite a Hi different John. quite a different <laughs> form of energy isn't it it's a kind of negative energy you could say in the sense that they are all hustlers gangsters and uh, truant, as we say in french <laughs> aren't they a lot of fear a lot, a lot of fear, fear. yeah, yeah. Mm. um yeah it's uh it's it's a dark movie it's uh it's a um, Kind of like a modern film noir type of film, and um, and very engaging. I think it's kind of like a it demands from the audience to like pay attention, mm -hmm. which uh, I find it likable. Yeah. Did, did you know each other before the shooting of the film? No, we ne we never knew each other, and um, <clears throat> we. Uh, But we became friends on the yeah. film. I mean, I think one of the great things about this film is that um, the the energy between the uh, the characters is is very spontaneous and very natural, and uh, that was uh, a chemistry that uh, could not have been planned. It was something that um, it was accidental, really, wasn't it? Yeah, I guess it was. Uh, yeah, and uh, it was. Uh, We were all generous, I, I guess, with each other, you know, and uh, yeah, that's true. that made it great. That's true. I mean, this is one of the few movies I would do again. Would you? Yeah. <laughs> I love yeah, I, I, w I would do it again. Yeah, if you weren't in it. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too, baby. <laughs> never leaves her side for a moment. I thought you'd be glad to know she's in good hands. Now get some rest. The boat will be ready for you on Friday. If I see you or any of your friends before then, Miss Finran will find herself the victim of a most gruesome violation before she dies, as indeed will your father, Mr. Hockney, and your uncle Randall in Arizona, Mr. Kint. I might only castrate Mr. McManus's nephew, David. I'll make myself clear. You will take care of the two bodies downstairs. 
We'll add them to the cost of Mr. Fenster. If you'll excuse me, gentlemen. Each of you have a specialty. Certainly. And uh, tell me about your, your specialty in, in uh, fraud <laughs> and. Uh, you mean to say the characters? The characters, yes. Specialty? Uh, You're I, explain I, it I, right? I, because I make a hell of a supply. Um, the character, mine was uh, explosives expert. Oh, explosives. Which, I'm sorry. you know, he plants one bomb in the whole film, so you really get that feeling across. Yeah. Uh, I feel excrement. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> uh, hello. Um, so I, I think that uh, what it is is uh, an, an expert at um, mischievousness and um, creative uh, uh, criminal undertaking and living the life of the criminal as well as the sociopath. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's a choice. When you start going that far against what is right, yeah. You you uh, <laughs> you are well, you you cross over a line yeah. and it becomes a lifestyle and I think that as far as expertise goes you know it's to be debated but uh, it certainly is their their forte is to be a criminal at heart and you know. But you were talking about camarad camaraderie just before, but does camaraderie exist among real gangsters? As far as you know. Well, I don't know. I mean. Uh, well. Neither do I. Uh, I, I. I certainly sense that from Scorsese's well, films. Let's hope. let's hope they get along. Yeah, they play poker. I mean, they got killing people all sure. night long. Let's hope they can go back and have a nice cup of coffee together. You would think. Tell a little just story. a chit-chat. A chit-chat. the film is extremely charming and they, I think that it gives us as spectators a certain problem because we look upon upon gangsters as more and more charming people I mean is it still possible to really make a gangster uh, what do you say someone someone to hate someone to uh, because you also well there is there's a ruthlessness that is uh, 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 certainly apparent in in gangsters of historical nature uh, I don't know that the characters portrayed in this film are as hate-filled and ruthless no. and awful as uh, the, the, the truly mad, insane, dangerous people we've read about over the years, um, be it gangster mafia or, or be it serial killer, you know, the, the whole infatuation now with that. I don't know that that's what this movie is about. No. This is really about being controlled by your fear what appears to be, as Kevin was saying earlier, what appears to be isn't always what is. And uh, the fact that it's happening to, as you say, gangsters. Yeah. And it is getting so close to comedy, the film. Well, anyway. yeah, because it's so close to life, you know. Yeah. It was a hit, a suicide mission to whack out the one guy that could finger Kaiser Sose. So Sose put some thieves to it. Men he knew he could march into certain death. You're saying Sose sent us to kill someone? You're saying Keaton did. Verbal, he left you behind for a reason. Just do what I tell you. 
If you all knew that Sose could find you anywhere, why did he give you the money to run? He could have used you on the boat. He wanted me to live. A one-time dirty cop without a loyalty in the world finds it in his heart to save a worthless rat cripple. No, sir, why? Edie. I don't buy that reform story for a minute. Even if I did, I certainly don't believe he would send you to protect her. So why? Because he was my friend. No, Verbal. He wasn't your friend. Keaton didn't have friends. What are you doing here? He saved you because he wanted it that way. It was his will. How did you get those marvelous actors, and did you know that they would function together? Um, yeah, I did, because they, they're, they're all wonderfully professional and uh, terrifically talented and very sweet people. And uh, I, uh, you know, they, 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 they responded to the script, they responded to me, they had seen public access, so after that, you know, they, they, they felt comfortable in trusting me with, uh, with the movie and trusting me with their performances. Is uh, the humor in the film very important for you? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I think humor, humor, humor is the first step in uh, sort of uh, getting in touch with the emotions of the audience, and bringing them into the movie, and then once you have the audience, you can take them wherever you like. Jeg har set filmen to gange og tænkt mig at se den en gang til julen. Gak du hen og gør lige så. Så til 100 års fødselsdagen. Den 28. december er selve dagen, og på den dato er der premiere på Torben Skødt Jensens dramadokumentariske film om Karl T.H. Drejer, Min Métier. Det sker i Dagmar i København, Drejers gamle biograf. Det var den, der sørgede for, at han fik margarine på brødet, ikke filmene. Vi har valgt et lille klip, hvor skuespilleren Axel Strøby fortæller om Drejers stedighed og jernvilje. Det er mærkeligt, at den, den mand var så selvudslægten og havde et, den enorme, det enorme selvværd alligevel. Jeg kan også huske, at i et scenebillede, der bad han også med den sagmodige stemme, om han ikke kunne få noget, noget bøgeløb, skyggen af noget bøgeløb, der sådan skulle vibrere op i det ene hjørne. Og mange af de maskinfolk og teaterfolk, der var rundt om ham og kiggede og satte lys og var med til det der, de havde ikke så meget en fornemmelse for drejer, så der ja, ja, det er nu nødvendigt, drejer, ja, gud, hvad er det billede, står som det så sagde han, jeg vil gerne bede om skyggen og det bøgeløb deroppe. Jamen hør nu her, drejer. Og så kunne man se, drejer, han var så stadig, så dynamoen i ham spandt op på 10.000 volt. Og der kom en vredesbølge helt ude bag horisonten i ham. Og den kom som et lille skvulp ud over underlæben for flere gange. Jeg vil gerne bede om skyggen af det bøgeløb deroppe. Og så fik han det. Værsgo. <laughs> I tragedien falder det mig lettere at indarbejde min egen personlighed og mit eget livssyn. At indføre dette noget, som får folk til at lytte. Hvad handler der Gertrud om? I hvert fald ikke om sex, men om kærlighed og erotik. Dette får mig til at tænke på tre værslinjer af den engelske digter Richard Aldington, så lydende. A man or woman might die for love and be glad in dying, but who would die for sex? 100 års jubilæum og jul på en gang. Der er virkelig noget at glæde sig til her i december. Danmarks Radio folder hele filmviften ud. Guldfeber, It's a Wonderful Life, Frankensteins Brud, Some Like It Hot, Den Tredje Mand og Blade Runner og meget, meget andet. På tirsdag tager jeg stikket ud, for der kommer ridderfalken John Houstons uovertruffende Dashiell Hammett-filmatisering, hvor Bogart spiller den kyniske og koleriske privatdetektiv Sam Spade. Måske hans mest sammensatte og bedste rolle. Come in. Hello, Tom. Got him? Got him. Swell. Here's another one for you. She killed Miles. Oh, and I've got some exhibits. The boys' guns, one of Cairo's, and a thousand dollar bill I was supposed to be bribed with. And this black statuette here that all the fuss was about. 
What's the matter with your little playmate? He looks broken hearted. I bet when he heard Gutman's story, he thought he had me. Cut it out, Sam. Well, should we be getting down to the hall? Harry, what is it? The uh, stuff that dreams are made of. Huh? være lukketid, men inden vi uddeler hatte, vil jeg give dem nogle julegaveidéer, splinter nye og anderledes. Film 95 er en lille billig oversigt over årets film med personlige anmeldelser af Jakob Stelman, Peter Risby Hansen og Nicolas Barbano. Det er da morsomt, at redaktørerne af filmsæsonen 94-95 har valgt det samme forsidebillede af Human Thurman fra Pulp Fiction. Der skulle jo være en del billeder af tag, skulle jeg mene. Næste gang omtaler vi den belgisk-franske film Farinelli af Gérard Corbio. Den handler om en kastratsanger og hans liv. Her er soundtracket fra filmen, og det er godt. Og til alle os, der elsker Clint Eastwood, er der kommet den her imponerende dobbelte CD-rom. Den har alle informationerne, og så er den sjov at lege med. Eastwood stiller selv de mest umulige spørgsmål om sin film, og hvis man ikke kan besvare dem, får man hatten skudt af. Men altså, man skal have Windows 95 for at køre den, og godt med power. Hvis man ønsker sig europæiske kvalitetsfilm på video, så får fat i det her Arthouse-katalog fra Gloria Film. Der finder man Buñuel, Marcel Carnet og andre herlige klassikere til overkommelige priser. Sidst vil vi så bare her på Bogart ønske dem en god jul. I det nye år kommer vi hver anden søndag. Tak for i aften.